Three Men in a Bible, Exploring the Sunday Scriptures. Join Father Panagiotis Boznos, Nick Leonis, and Stephen Christoforou for their weekly Orthodox Christian Bible study. They're three friends who hang out every week and explore the Sunday Gospel and Epistle readings. Well, last time it was just preparing. Oh, it's now streaming. Is this happening? It's happening. We're live. Is this happening? Is it actually happening? I think it's happening. I think YouTube doesn't like Maybe YouTube doesn't like like uh, Christian. Kalu (laughs) Kale. Yeah. Yeah. All He's right. been banned from YouTube. When you say Kalu Kale, that reminds me of the, the carpenter and the oysters. But that's not what he says. No, I was thinking the, of the, the walrus, the walrus and the oysters. The walrus and the I was carpenter. thinking of Robin Hood. Yeah. That's Udalali. That's Udalali. Yeah. <laughs> what a day. Yeah. No, right. doesn't somebody sort of exclaim Kalu Kale? No. Not in the, not in that Disney version, if that's what you're referring to. Not in Robin Hood? I thought somebody says Kalu Kale. I don't believe so. You need to send me the clip. We need evidence. <laughs> I don't believe you. Clipper didn't I'm, happen. I I know that movie pretty well. I love I I actually really enjoy the walrus and the carpenter scene from uh what is it from? Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland, yeah. Never, I was never a big fan of that one. I wasn't either, but of, I like that uh, I like that little vignette. Yeah, I don't know. I've never been a big fan of that one. Um, the other one I've never, I was never a big fan of was um, Sword in the Stone. Really? That, that, that one just it just goes on and on and on. It just seems long and drawn out. So, eh. turns into like fish or something, and it's just yeah. All right. It's a very delightful. Which do you prefer? Which do I prefer? What? Let's see. Uh, Let's see. Sword in the Stone or Kid in King Arthur's Court? Never saw the second one. Because I was pretty sure that I wouldn't like it. So, <laughs> but it's about baseball. Is it though? <laughs> yes. It's about as much about baseball as uh, as Hook is about baseball. Run home, baseball Jack. is a pretty central plot point to, to the movie Hook. I know, I'm saying, but it's not a baseball movie. <laughs> I never said it was a baseball movie. You said Look, that King Arthur Court is. Next said, thing you're going to do, you're going to argue that Die Hard is not a Christmas movie, and this is just this conversation is spiraling. Yeah, we've already. I'm. I'm. I've come down firmly in in favor of Christmas. I I used to. You know, it's funny. Is I would say it's as much of a Christmas movie as It's a Wonderful Life, which is my favorite movie of all time. Um, but I'd also argue that It's a Wonderful Life is not exclusively. A Christmas movie. Most of the movie is not about Christmas. Well, or or didn't take place even during that time. So I was whereas actually Die Hard does take place during that entire time, but it's not about Christmas. So I would say Die Hard is a Christmas movie, but not exclusively a Christmas movie. A few I mean, things when are he gets exclusively. A gun, like few well, Christmas Miracle movies, on 34, unless it's. Miracle on 34th Street is a, is a Christmas movie? No, it's a procedural. It's a legal procedural. It's, it's not a... About what? Right? It's, it's, about it's, what? Law, it's law and order. It's a courtroom drama. Children. Yeah, it's a courtroom, courtroom drama. drama. <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew the, uh, like the opening like, statement yeah. that they read. Oh, man. I might need to uh, mute myself here for a second and answer a phone. <laughs> no, Talk amongst yourselves. We're good. We're good. All right. Okay. Well, boom goes the tomb. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Truly, he is risen. Yeah. It's an exciting time. It is. Everybody have a good Pascha? Did yeah, that. It was, nice Pascha. it was cold leading up to Pascha, and then we had an 80 degree day on Pascha. And it's been 55 ever since. Mm-hmm. So it was awesome. So your, it was perfect. your experience of the Lord's resurrection is exclusively weather related. I would say it's weather related, but not exclusively. Me. <laughs> <laughs> right. It plays a part, right? It plays a part, right. <laughs> As a psychosomatic being who is subject to the elements, that makes sense. Yeah. There's some. Tosca was as much about the weather. Right. 
as it was the Lord's resurrection. No, that that uh, that balance that balance is off. Yeah, very very much so. Mm-hmm. There's a warm front coming in from the west. Pasca must east. be here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was great. Uh, I don't know. There's just there's just such a you, you know you get you get tired and you get beat up and you know to a point. Obviously, that's the whole point of it. The way we do it in the Orthodox Church. Um, yeah. And then well, the this 14 month of Lent that. that we've experienced yeah. over this past year. Yeah. So, but here we are on the other side. And it's exciting. So, shall we uh, start with the prayer? Are we ready to? Are we ready to do the marker of silliness? <laughs> the, yeah, the, I'm the, done being the changing. Yeah. Cool. All right, Father. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down upon death by death, and to those in the tombs he has granted life. Jesus, having risen from the grave as he foretold, has granted us eternal life in his great mercy. Amen. Amen. All right. We're, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for the epistle. Well, that's not the epistle. We call it the epistle sometimes, but this is not the epistle, is it? the apostolic reading yeah the apostolic reading I'm pretty pumped about about doing this acts is one of my favorite books of the bible mm-hmm. um and uh we're back into narrative which... when i was when i was younger i thought mm-hmm. that the book of acts was about an axe <laughs> i couldn't understand <laughs> why well, there been... was a book in the bible named acts in uh, contrast yeah, to I, the book of swords <laughs> yeah <laughs> right right Right. I, and yeah, you, I mean, it's, it's funny. You just call it acts. Right. And what does that mean without like, what's the act of the apostles is its full name as we call it, but we say acts and then it sounds like a tool deeds yeah. or a spray or well, body spray. <laughs> right. Yes. right. Body spray. Are you the apostles? <laughs> <laughs> the apostles were middle school boys confirmed. <laughs> Oh, jeez. That is one thing I did not miss about camp last year. (laughs) When I think of summer camp, being a camp counselor, I think of Axe body spray. That's true. Yeah. One year, I I think it was Axe, something set off the fire alarm. (laughs) I had a, I won't say say it on, I won't say it on YouTube because I don't want to, I don't want potential camp goers to get ideas, but. There were there were axe bombs in one cabin that I was counseling once, and it took days days to get rid of the smell. <laughs> oh man! Anyway, the acts a c t s acts yes of the apostles, the deeds well, of not, the apostles. Not reading from the book of Bostaffs or size or yeah. anyway, not a funny joke. No, we're coming. off that joke. That joke. That joke. Yeah, we've, 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 we've moved on. on. So. If anything, you can go with like lumberjack tools because we haven't gone there yet. But to go back oh, to anyway, that sounds okay. <laughs> Following Pascha, the apostolic readings come from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, um, not from the epistles or the letters. Um, so this is uh, again uh, a collection from. Uh, and it's not a collection of letters like the other uh, New Testament books are, nor is it uh, the gospel in the way that the first four books are, but it is kind of a, uh, what we would call it a history, like as a, as a genre. So uh, St. Luke, who wrote our third gospel, is also the author of the Acts of the Apostles, and he's writing very much in this, um, uh, within the vein of an established Uh, genre within the ancient world, which is a history. It'll be later picked up by other church historians um, who will write in similar, similar manners. But Luke is essentially giving us something that's very, very standard in the ancient world, which is just an account, a a historical account. Um, It's slightly different uh, from, from the gospels in the sense that um, its focus is on the apostles, um, not as opposed to Christ, but the apostles as the expression of the life of the church and the life of Christ after his ascension. Um, and after uh, the the Feast of Pentecost. Um, 
So that is that is what we have. It starts with um, it starts with the ascension, and then goes through um, through Paul's uh, Paul's arrest and uh, travels to to Rome. Um, we don't hear narrated uh, in Saint Luke's account either the martyrdom of Saint Paul or the martyrdom of uh, of Saint Peter. Um, and Peter really drops out of the story uh, about a third of the way, halfway through. Um, and Paul becomes the primary focus because Luke traveled with Paul. Um, and so he's uh, narrating his own experiences. There's a couple of points we didn't just, this is all context because yeah. that's what we do. Um, there are a couple of points in, uh, in the Acts of the Apostles where um, Luke will actually change a uh, person uh, from the, the pronouns he uses, right? Yeah. Like we did so this. instead of, yeah. instead of the third person narration, um, he'll slip into first person um, where he said, like, we went. And so it happens two or three times where he actually um, does make that make that change. Um, and I think we so see that ahead. actually in some of the upcoming Sunday readings. Like, I think we will see that in some of the Sundays ahead that we, we did this. We went there. But it's very brief. And it's almost like it's almost as if he drafted it and then went back and edited it and didn't edit out those first person situations because it doesn't like at no point does he say you know, I, Luke, traveled with Paul um, mm. here. He just kind of slips in a, like, we went there. Uh, so in any event. Uh, yeah, I was there too. And 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 honestly, actually, th this, I think, connects with something that we've talked about before in terms of sort of like the comprehensiveness or completeness of, of, of scripture, because even the books, the book, the Acts of the Apostles is not comprehensive. I mean, this isn't no. something that gives you like everything that all of the apostles did. Like you said, I mean, like Paul really becomes kind of the primary character. Um, but again, like the, uh, this is, this is a particular text written for a particular audience. I mean, if we see, if we think about this and the gospel, according to Luke as kind of part one and part two, really what they would have been presented as, um, you know, the, the gospel starts with this message to Theophilus, right? Like, you know, presumably everybody's just doing sequels now. <laughs> not trilogies just sequels yeah right um but but again like so written for a particular person particular context um but again like as we've, we said before in terms of the interpretation of scripture like we, the church knows things right the sort of memory of the church the mind of the church like we have we have a tradition about what happened to peter mm -hmm. we have a tradition about what happened to name your apostle uh, just because it's not written down right doesn't mean that we don't know it the church wrote this down the church interprets this text and we know things that aren't in this particular text. And again, I think it's important because, again, in our particular American context, context, we have this like, if it's not written down, I believe I don't believe it. But again, that's not even like the preconception of, of the way that these texts operate. These aren't all of the acts of the apostles. So it is possible. This is all they did. After this, they yeah. all just kind of pieced out. <laughs> that doesn't make, it just doesn't make sense at the point. Yeah. Just, what I was going to say is it is possible that uh, that at some point, Peter, uh, not Peter, uh, Robin Hood does say Kalu Kale, but we just don't have it in the film. <laughs> That's right? fair. What we have fair. in the film, what we have in the That's film fair. is Udalali, but. That's more of a little not John, exclusive, right? Like, that's the thing. Like, yeah, Udalali, Udalali is in Robin Hood, but is Robin Hood exclusively use Udalali or does he also maybe say Kalu Kale? And that's why people could, come to this series. This is so dumb. For but Robin no, but, but that's also no that brings up a good point though. You also can't make up stuff either. True, which is what I'm doing. Thank you. Right, right, right. <laughs> right, 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 right. Right. But but no, I think that's important that like even what the church's tradition is about these saints is not just made up true stuff either. Right. You know the, 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 that's why the the understanding of what the church is in preserving what occurred is important mm -hmm. and trusting the church so much that you also trust this, mm -hmm. right? Because again, this is where, you know, the church collectively put this together. So there's, there is a, a level of, you know, you, you, you can't just make things up and it's worth having some caution in how we read, interpret, or look at non uh, biblical works it's important mm -hmm. uh, because there are false books out there um and finding out what books the church finds to be helpful um even outside of uh the bible so um 
because he, Robin Hood didn't say Kalukale. It's not canonical anyway. So nonsense. Okay. All right. So <laughs> silliness number two. And that timestamp goes in there. Maybe okay. It's a point though. We made a point with that silliness though. So we did. We did. And it's going to take us 15 right. minutes in the session before we read any of this week's. <laughs> well, you give us context. It's all right. We're, we're, we're rolling. We're rolling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so this, uh, this coming Sunday, the reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. It's going to be chapter 5, verses 12 through 20. And it begins, In those days, many signs and wonders were done among the people by the hands of the apostles. And they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dare join them, but the people held them in high honor. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women. So they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and pallets. And as Peter came by, at least his shadow might, might fall on some of them. And the people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits. And they were all healed. But the high priest rose up and all who were with him, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the common prison. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all of the words of this life. Amen. And we should also clarify that the, the gospel reading for this day is the, the reading is the... Uh, the reading from John where uh, Thomas and the Lord, Thomas touches the Lord. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. as you can see from the, the, the title of today's uh, video, this is for Thomas Sunday, which is, which is uh, normally the, the first Sunday um, after Pascha. We've left the, uh, the Diodion period, uh, the period like leading up into Lent, including Lent. And now we are in the Pentecostadion period, which is going to lead us through to Pentecost. And so we're on these prescribed readings from John and the Acts all the way through for the next, I forget how many Sundays that is off the top of my head. Until Pentecost. Until Pentecost, actually, yeah. Actually, until All Saints Sunday. That's the end of the Fair. Pentecost audio. Fair. And, and, and like you were saying before, Father, it, for the context, the introduction, right, Acts is the, 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 the account of what these first followers of Jesus were doing after the ascension. Um, we sort of get into signs and wonders right at the very beginning. I mean, this is something that we see right in that first verse there that many signs and wonders were done um, among the people by the hands of the apostles. Um, I, I think there's, we didn't talk about this earlier, but I think a, th a thing that's really interesting about this is even the language that is used to talk about those, those the, like it doesn't say miracles were done amongst the people by the hands of the apostles. It says signs and wonders. And I, I think there's maybe something kind of like worth pausing there. Um, because signs, right, the word signs is, is often something that we see in the Old Testament, um, that if God is sort of saying something, offering a pro promise to his people, like this will happen, right? And you can trust that what I'm telling you is true because this, you will see the sign, right? There's kind of this ultimate sort of reality that God is pointing to, but he's pointing them to something like much more immediate as kind of almost a show of good faith. Like, this is going to happen, but like a sign will be this is happening, Um and I think, uh, you know, a, a thing to keep in mind about the life of the, the, the church from the very beginning is like, we're constantly looking forward to the, the reality of the coming of the kingdom. Like all of these things are not sort of ends in themselves, right? Not things necessarily to be celebrated in and of themselves, but signs that Christ truly is Lord, Christ truly is risen, the kingdom of heaven fully is at hand. Like that's the reason why the shadow of Peter, Peter can lay across sick people and come to him, not because Peter is special or hot stuff or whatever it is, right? But like, these are immediate signs that are pointing us, if we have the eyes of faith to be able to see like, this is, this is the account of the kingdom, right? This, this is why I think the, the acts of the apostles are so important um, because the kingdom has broken through, like we are full of the Holy Spirit. This is the, the reality that we are now living in as people. Um, yeah, you also- I think. If you want to, you know, dial in a little bit further to the signs you have got in in the Gospel of John, you know, Christ when Christ works in the Gospel of John, they're always referred to as signs. Right? Mm. I think there's seven seven miracles that seven. he performs, but they're 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 referred to as signs, um, and that that's 
uh, that's the way that John talks about them, right? They're, they're signs of his divinity, right? They, they point beyond what, beyond just what is happening right there. They point to Christ's divinity, right? So the fact that um, Luke is using that same term, right? And he's not using Fafma, which is, which is like wonders or, or miracles um, at this or some of the other points that we'll reference later on. At no point does it use that, that term Fafma, which is what we typically think of when we think of miracles, um, but we see instead, you know, signs. And that is very much participation in Christ's ministry because that, that was very specific um, to the way that uh, St. John refers to Christ's signs. I don't even want to use the word miracles there to, you know. Yeah. Which, which is one of the reasons why, I mean, he, his, his narrative is much more, what's the word? Cause he, he only gives us seven, right? He doesn't give us just kind of like, he very kind of carefully curates the seven signs that he is giving mm-hmm. us because he's making this very express sort of theological point. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and, and the other thing too, is that, um, you know, Christ promises his disciples that you will do even greater things than these. Right. And Mm -hmm. this is what we're getting right off the bat. Like, you know, you're, you're impressed when I cast out demons and do Mm -hmm. this, like, Mm -hmm. just wait. Well, that's that's what you're going to be doing. St. John Chrysostom picks up that exact point in reference to this, to this passage um, that, you know, when Peter's shadow, right. You know, someone has to touch Christ's cloak in order to, to be healed um, or touch Christ himself. And that St. John Christum, when he looks at this, he says, you know, this is the fulfillment of when he told them that they would do greater signs um, than he did. Yeah. Wait, do we want to get into that? Because I know this is something we identified earlier as um, maybe like that, 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 that shadow and the way this maybe connects to like our understanding of relics and other, other places in acts. Like, I don't know. I'm saying so, it. So maybe we so, want, so, want to get into so, it. So, well, first of all, I want to, let's take one step back um, and okay. talk about, I want to say, so a um, couple things about our characters, I suppose, in this narrative, who we're dealing with here. Mm-hmm. Um, and what we read is, I think, slightly confusing. So I'd like to make a couple, you know, some uh, discuss some clarification here. Um, it says, and they were all together in Solomon's portico, period. None of the rest dared join them but the people held them in high honor. So we have some that were there. um, And we had just been talking about the apostles. So I'm assuming it's the apostles followed by none of the rest. Who are the rest? And then there was additional people who held them in high honor. So, so those three, and then I want to talk about Peter real quick too, but um, what's true. Who's doing what here? A lot of imprecise pronouns right a lot of they a lot of they and them language for a couple of sentences right right so we just talked about the apostles then we get into and they're all in solomon's uh portico so i'm assuming we're talking roughly about the 12 or yeah so yeah then they none of that none dare join them Mm -hmm. so there's a group there and then there's the people who held them in high regard are those two different are like the people those who not are not maybe christians yet but the others are new are I think you mentioned earlier when we were talking before this, those are new Christians. So there's like the none dare join them are the new Christians. Is that correct? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. And then the people held them in high honor are those who have yet to become Christians who are, might be there who are going to experience these signs and wonders for the first time. Yes. Yeah. Cause I think there's, okay. there's two clues in the text, right? Like at the end of this, pericope that we have when we get into verses 19 and 20 um the apostles are arrested right, right. so like i think you know i think you know the, we, we it starts with the apostles are doing these wonders the apostles are they're arrested at the end so clearly they're kind of the ones that are being present um and i think to that point about who was there with the honor the people held them in high honor the sentence after that is and more than ever believers were added to the lord right multitudes both of men and women so um here are these apostles who are doing these wonders in the name of the Lord, as he promises, and people are seeing this and, and they are being received into the church in even, and, and saying more than ever, right. Even more than, than the, 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 the speech that Peter gives on Pentecost, right. Which we get sort of earlier uh, in acts. Like it's, it's saying that there's this flood of people who are coming in and, and seeing what the apostles are doing and capable of and, 
becoming Christians. And then that becomes this friction with the, the Sadducees who filled with jealousy arrest the apostles uh, later on. Right. Um, so to clarify, the apostles are there. The new Christians, in portico. Right. The no new one Christians, else from the Christians is joining them. Uh, and I want to talk about that too. And then there's a group of people who are there as well. The, those Christians that did not join them are not joining them. They did not dare join them. And I think that sets the scene for what the apostles are walking into. Like it's, they're arresting. They are, well, not even just the arrest, just the fact that they are knowingly before, like, so before the, they, they um, experience Christ's resurrection, they're all in hiding. Right. Mm-hmm. They're all, they're all, they're afraid. The apostles themselves are afraid. And then they are strengthened. They are confident. They are um, aware of the dangers, not stupidly, uh, you know, not without, without, you know, um, they throw caution to the wind. Is this, I mean, is that really, I mean, I they just so. go right out there and do it, huh? Well, you got to look at the rest of the, what happens after this. Okay. I think so they, okay. they totally do. Okay. So, so they go out, I mean, they go out to a place that the new Christians who might not be strengthened yet, are willing to go Mm -hmm. so it's pretty clear that they're they're walking into they're walking into the lion you know the the lion's den here um solomon's portico (laughs) that'll happen the lion's den will happen later you're right right, right. well and it happened before too for others so um yeah um no but you get what i'm saying they're 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 walking into danger and it's obvious and it's it's basically explicitly said here or implied um with with that others won't join join them so I just wanted to, I guess, set the scene for what they are very willingly, what they know uh, about their surroundings. Yeah. Mm. And then they get arrested. And then an angel comes and releases them from jail. But. And then they go right back to where they were and right. they start preaching again. Because so, the angel tells them like that thing you were doing and the reason you yeah. got arrested, go do it again. <laughs> yeah. And they do. Yeah. Yeah. And they do, okay. just, which so, is a, a gutsy scene move. Set. Scene set. I think, yeah, it's gutsy. So there's, there is a little bit of a... There's so much faith involved, I think, at the end of the day. I mean, like, right? Like, there's, there's this faith and confidence in what they believe is to be true. Mm-hmm. That they're willing to put their neck on the line again and again and again, you know, and especially, you know, post-Steven... And, uh, you know, these times this when... Pre-Steven? Is this pre-Steven? This is pre-Steven. Oof. Okay, but they continue to do this pro-Steven, too. Um, yeah. They're, like, yeah. They're, there's, they're, 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 they're poking the... clarify that the Stephen, is the, the Stephen is the first martyr. Yes, it's true. Uh, they're right. poking the bear, you know? Yeah. So, but they're doing good things. People are coming to Christ. Um, and then, then it, it specifically calls out Peter. Mm-hmm. Why? Why Peter? Why not Thaddeus? He's got a cool name. <laughs> Why not? Call it's true. Although, you know, the rock, rock, Rocky was pretty cool too, I guess. Resident tough guy. Yeah, but but Pete, but like so, so why, why 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 you know it says that they Ab. that his shadow right mm-hmm. might fall upon them and they be healed. Mm-hmm. it calls him out specifically i think that's kind of a neat observation or you know neat thing that that's in here i don't know if we want to flush that out just a little bit yeah and it's not the first time well, right because if we if we rewind a little bit to the day of pentecost so that's that's another thing to keep in mind right like we in kind of our temporal stream are on the road to pentecost right this is part of our preparation for pentecost mm-hmm. pentecost happens earlier in acts and and the coming of the spirit is incredibly important, obviously, in the life of the church. And I think it can even be used to explain some of the boldness and so forth, right? So we we keep that in mind. But on the day of Pentecost, Peter is the one who gets up and give that, gives that sermon, right? So there's already, there's kind of a, a layer of um, initiative and, uh, um, and I think, you know, I don't know, leadership, um, uh, impulsivity, potentially as well. <laughs> You know, Peter, Peter's the guy. I think who's he's still, less. Imp- I think he's less impulsive now than he used to be. I think th- there's a difference between impulsive and boldness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think they're all impulsive. bold, 
and I think there was an impulsiveness, uh, but I think there is now uh, more of a transformation towards his boldness. Hmm. That he is, I mean, that the boldness of a of a leader who is, who are he was impulsive, that impulsivity, um, led him also to deny Christ. Yeah, you know, because it was impulsive that led him somewhere. Whereas this is a boldness of confidence and given to him by Christ when he kind of uh, restored him and lifted him up and then commissioned him. You know, this is for you to do. Um, and he's got such purpose and such, you know, so I, I think that the boldness is a, is a good leadership quality uh, that he has, whereas his impulsivity, uh, though he be a leader, was not a very good quality previously. Mm. So I don't know. I mean, I, th- I think there's, you know, there's, I think the people who honored, who shows that the, the apostles are held in honor because of Christ, because of their, their involvement with Christ, um, whereas their involvement in Christ would have gotten them killed, or they were afraid that it would have gotten them killed, right? They were afraid. The reason why they went into hiding in the first place after the crucifixion was because their closeness with Christ was going to get them killed. That was their thought, hmm. right? Now, their, their involvement in Christ, though it could still get them killed, is also what is holding them in high regard among these people. Specifically, in this case, Peter, who is um, who's made these speeches and who's been bold enough to to kind of walk through the door first, and and is the source right of these signs and wonders. At the end of the day, like it is, it is Christ who is acting through right. them, right? To the extent that Peter's shadow is going to heal somebody, it's not because of Peter; it's because of who Peter is in his relationship with the Lord, right? Right. Is the Lord like acting through these people that actually like makes them who they are. Right. Which I think now leads us into these relic conversation. Right. Because okay. oh, no, you don't want to go there yet. No, not yet. Okay. Cause I'm thinking about the rest of, I'm thinking about the rest of the book of acts and Peter plays a diminished role again to go back to what Steve said, right. This is, this is not the entirety of, of the, the actions or the deeds of the apostles, but it is St. Luke's perspective and what he saw, especially as a, a travel companion with St. Paul, but St. Peter will take a smaller role as we get further on. And he will also defer leadership to James, um, the brother of the Lord while in certain situations. Mm. So, while we're talking about these initial stages of, of boldness, I don't want to say that he ever, he, he loses his boldness, but he, you know, it's kind of like, uh, it's a bad comparison, right? But it's kind of like a St. John the Baptist in Christ, like I've got to decrease so he can increase. You see that same, you see St. Peter eventually starting to decrease so that Paul can increase within, within the text of, of Acts. Mm. Right. And with that, you see a tempering of some of that boldness because he's not in his later interactions with Paul, right? Not in the beginning, right? In the beginning, immediately after Pentecost, we're still in the early, early stages. He's the one who gives the speech at Pentecost. He's the one who confronts Ananias and uh, Sapphira just at the beginning of this chapter. He's the one whose his shadow does this healing. He's the one that um, speaks after the apostles come out of prison but then within the next couple of chapters, he's going to start deferring yeah. a little bit. So perhaps it's one of those situations where in the earliest hours, you need that strong boldness. But then as structure is taking place, right, as other people are, are being bold, right, as they start to go out and preach, because for the majority of you know the early chapters, the evangelical work of of the apostles is still primarily Jerusalem, Judea based, and yeah. then it expands, but it doesn't start. Yeah. And even, and even that, right. Because when, when Paul, when Paul talks about himself, right. And he talks about his own position as an apostle in his epistles, like early in Galatians and other places, he talks about himself as like the apostle to the nations, which mm-hmm. kind of corresponds to Peter as the apostle to the, 
to the Judeans. Um, and, and sort of the unfolding story, yeah, because, you know, this is the, the, the gospel is originally preached around the place where Jesus was crucified and resurrected, mm-hmm. begins to go like, you know, at, um, early, actually the, the reading for Pascha, right? Like he tells, he tells his disciples, you're going to preach me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and then to the ends of the world as you sort of move away from the sphere of Judean influence, mm-hmm. right? The person who's kind of like leading that charge more and more is, is Paul rather than Peter as well. Yes, but even in the heart and the center of it in Jerusalem, it's James. It's James. That's true. Who, who, who yeah, he is the so, bishop of, uh, as we get later on to Acts 15 yeah. and all that. Yeah. Well, and I, and I think that all points to a very sound doctrine of it's not about them. It's not about Peter. It's not about James. It's not about Paul. It's about Christ. And which they all know Paul this. Says, which is what Paul says when he says, you know, like, I thank God that I didn't baptize any of you except for was it Rufus? All these people. <laughs> right? I didn't baptize any of you except for these 10. Um, <laughs> right. And he's like, you know, are you, are you, you know, people ask, are you of Apollo or Apollos? Are you of Peter? Or right. Are you of, of um, Paul? And he says, but I, you know, I knew nothing among you except for Christ and him crucified. Right. He, he makes it very clear that this is not about being right. a follower of Paul, but it is about Paul bringing you to Christ. Right. Um, at the same time, there is, I think, some sort of relationship that Peter has with the people of Jerusalem, right? They're having followed Christ, having them seen him, the credibility that he must that he has uh, with the people because he was close with Christ. Mm-hmm. All that stuff exists um, at this point. So, so, so for for him to come be preaching. Uh, the resurrected Christ to be showing signs and wonders to be, you know, I think calling him out by name shows that his closeness with Christ is uh, what really propels the signs and wonders, mm-hmm. which leads us into relics. And <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we did it. We got there. <laughs> um, but so, so they're, 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 they are, are these people the first of all there's an extreme amount of faith like the woman who touched the garment of christ that if we can if we can fall into literally fall into the space in which this star million miles away millions of miles away hits this man and stops (laughs) that's basically what a shadow is right like you're just like getting in between him and the ground, Mm -hmm. that's enough. That's enough to potentially to, 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 to cure us. That's, that's incredible amount of faith. And it shows the, uh, the miraculous power of Christ through things and even things that aren't even like, you can't like pick up. You, you can't pick up a shadow. That's true. A, a shadow is, Peter, is, is almost like the opposite of a thing. Sew it on. So it so, so on another. <laughs> there we go. Let's keep those, those animated references going. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, like there's, so if, if there's this, this space that is one holy, there's this, this identifiable object, but even that is, you can't even pick it up. You can touch it. Um, that's holy. Um, I think that then, you know, and, and why it's, it's, it's because there's a relationship to Christ. And, I, and the same thing goes for what we have today with relics, whether it be a belt or whether it be bones or, you know, whatever we have, these things are holy, made holy by Christ and made miraculous yeah. because of these people's relationship with Christ. And thus, even when we as Christians, uh, we have that potential as well. We have the potential as well, if, we're, if we can be close with Christ, that he may work through us in, in ways that are miraculous. So one, we have that, 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 I mean, we should be working towards our holiness with Christ in which he can work through us, but also not, and not for us again, but for, for him. Um, and others love, you know, but also the fact that like, there are holy things. Yeah. There are things that can, I don't know. It's hard for, it's hard because I get a little frustrated because I, I speak with people who don't 
Ooh, ooh, relics, weird. And I get that. That's it is kind of weird for our our world that we live in. What's weird about it? Um, well, specifically, let's look. Huh? How is it presented to me? Um, that these are just things. Mm-hmm. That's how it's usually presented. That's just a thing. That's not. Yeah. It's, it's it's got this kind of a gnostic uh, undertone that God can't make what is tangible and of you know, this world holy. Yeah. Right. So there's that. There's the fact that like a lot of times it's bones mm-hmm. and and things of you know from saints that have died in this world, right? Yeah. And that's weird, you know, like we you know that, that we would hold on to these things. Um, is it weird though? In this in in 21st century America, it sure, certainly is. Is it weird right? among like I'm just. Well, well, there's yeah. So, what do you mean by weird? Like weird in the in the in the unfolding course of scripture, right? Because we can even point to you know Old Testament examples of, you know, the the, the bones of saints doing things. But I think Nick, to your point, like in the modern American context, right, where death is a thing that is icky, and you know, when people die, we sort of like we send them to the funeral home. We don't. Right. I, I mean, I know people who are even sort of you know creeped out by the kiss of peace in a funeral, right? They want nothing to do mm-hmm. with kind of dead bodies and, 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 and relics, right. Which aren't exclusively right. But are also frequently the, the physical remains of saints. Yeah. That can, for people who are un- uncomfortable with death and uncomfortable with physically interacting with death, um, that can be very uncomfortable for a lot of people. And yeah, it's so two, great. I think we have two, sorry. Yeah. Oh, and then, but so, so great is the, is the triumph of the King, right? Triumph of the King. He does, uh, he does these things. Like the shadows belong to him and the shadows do his will, right? The bones of his people belong to him and do his will. Well, and that death, even death, I mean, like the, the bones of his saints can bring life, right? Like, so, so the, the death does not have that dominion. And then the fact that like, it's entirely biblical. That's the other thing. It's entirely biblical for there to be relics. So I think that's that's where I wanted to jump in and say that there's I think we're talking about two we're talking about two separate things okay. um, to a, to a certain extent we're talking to one extent we're talking about um, we're talking about fellow fellow Christians who um, do not have a tradition of relics within their belief st- structure that we need to establish the biblical nature of of relics as you know authentic to Christianity. And then you're talking about people either within or without Christianity who more generally have an, don't have a concept of God's, God's working through material nature and the holiness of created matter. Right. And that's, I think those are two separate, two separate Mm. things. So let's, let's go, let's like dive into some of the, this let's dive into the first part because it's it's the easier part and then we can have a conversation about the other um but we've referenced it without giving specific citation but fourth kingdoms uh fourth kingdoms 13 has the the death of elisha who is the the prophet who succeeds um elijah so much easier to distinguish them i'm assuming in in Hebrew and in greek very easy in english we've got elijah and elisha yeah so elisha sha is the one we're talking about right now so i'll start in verse 20 now elisha died and they buried him then in the following year the raiding bands from moab invaded the land and it came to pass as they were burying a man they beheld a lightly armed band of raiders and they cast that man into the tomb of elisha when the man touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. So we were talking about, you know, Nick was talking about bones, right? The, the bones, the physical remains of saints, um, of the people who have been filled with the Holy Spirit, that their physical remains do not lose that grace, even though their soul has been separated for them. And we can yeah. talk about, we can talk about that why i think that's i think that is the second part but yeah. let's just establish but know, it does happen we've seen it, it happen. happens right it's it's it is completely like it is an authentic part of the christian faith to confess 
healing and miracles through relics. We see it first through bones of the saints in the Old Testament with Elisha. Then we get Peter's shadow here in Acts, um, but also in the book of Acts, we get just because we got to be, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. What's good for, what's good for Peter should be good for Paul. Um, <laughs> we get uh, in chapter 19, now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the disease left them and the evil spirits went out of them. Pretty, uh, Pretty so unambiguous. Got, right. And we've got the example of, I, I picked these three. There's, there's more, right? Because there's examples of Christ healing the blind man with, with mud. Um, yep. And there's examples of the, the Israelites being healed from their snake bites um, through the bronze serpent. Um, but these are, I brought these three up because these are physical contact with something that came, that was, that was not, god yeah right the, the physical remains of a person right or, the, or even a living person right as a living yeah. person paul is blessing these right. aprons and these handkerchiefs right they're taking things they're taking things from his hand and he's handing them to them and then they're using those things and using that to anoint or bringing them and touching someone else with them and that's bringing healing Right. So the yeah, grace right. is transferred through this object that was touched by someone, which is really important because, as we said, not only do we have physical remains of that individual, as in the case of Elisha, but we often have clothing or blessing crosses or, or things that, you know, vestments, you know, handkerchiefs or other things that have been touched by or blessed by saints while they were alive. We also see instances where people will bring like their cross or their prayer rope or something or someone and bless them over the relics, the actual physical remains of. So the point being the Orthodox teaching that the grace of the Holy Spirit works through the material world, both the physical body of a saint and the things that they have touched are completely and totally established within the writing of scripture. Yeah. Yeah. Multiple times in multiple places. Right. Yeah. Now, I'm going to take this in a little different direction because we're actually we're moving fast on time here, and both verses that are parts that we've read about Saint Paul and Saint Peter, um, there's a reference to hands. So, did you is, you had mentioned Father Paniotti? I know, but we didn't get to the second part. Oh, you want to skip that then? Let's go straight. But why this mean, happens, it, right? Okay, yeah, go, we go. Oh, we okay. got to get to the, I mean, because we said we've, we need to be equipped when we talk to other Christians because it's very common for Orthodox Christians to be criticized for their veneration of relics. Um, right. right. We need to be equipped to say that, you know, actually the physical touching and veneration of, of relics and, and, you know, shrines at, at, um, the bones or the the tombs of saints like this is a completely biblical thing like it's not right. it's not yeah so we need to have that firmly established but the the more important part um is is why why is it that god works through material stuff right yeah. and even non i mean light is light is particles light is material yeah right it's yeah. not not material when acting as a particle it's a particle right it is created mm -hmm. right right it's not spirit it's yeah um and the reason being because christ came to fill all the world with himself mm -hmm. right that the, the the purpose of the purpose of creation is union with god and that's not that's not an uh exclusive to human beings mm -hmm. human beings are the agents of that right we have the the term we often use is that we are the the priest of creation right because as as the pinnacle of god's creation we are created with both soul and body we're created in his image where the rest of creation was was not and so that humanity has this special role and the the church fathers refer to 
human nature as a microcosm that, you know, everything else was spoken into existence, right? God spoke, there was light, God spoke, and, you know, the angels, everything else came into being, whereas mankind was formed out of creation, right? And it's amazing to see, we have a, a physicist at, at my parish who's just a, a brilliant physicist, how, you know, we are essentially made up of, you know, stardust. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, like we, the, the science proves what the Orthodox Church has been speaking about theologically for, for centuries, which is we are connected to every other aspect of creation. Right. And in that sense, when our humanity is saved, when our human nature is saved and our person, like when we are saved, we are saving and filling the rest of creation, right? As we are filled with Christ, Christ is filling creation, right? Because we're not separated from creation, which is why when Adam fell, the whole world fell. When Adam, you know, when we resurrect the whole of creation, right? That's why the kingdom will be a refashioning of earth, right? It's not just like a idealized version of it. It is a re reshaping, reforming because all of earth is being filled with, with Christ. So, those saints and holy people who have lived their life actualizing or realizing that union with God fulfill their ultimate purpose, which is to unite God's divinity and, and creation, right? God gave us the ability to do that in as much as we participate in him, right? That's why we were baptized into Christ because it's actually not us who does it, but it's, yeah. it happens to us in as much as we are united to Christ, right? So he's yeah. still doing the work, but he is a human and God. Yeah. Right. And so we put ourselves, we put ourselves in a, in a position to be the instrument of his activity yeah. in the world. Right. Right. So to get to that point where we can explain mm -hmm. this to somebody succinctly mm -hmm. to some degree, we have the biblical explanations we had part one, mm -hmm. yeah. part one, two it happens, right? One, one it happens. happens. It's, so and two, right. why? Because Christ came and uh, and made himself to, for the purpose of filling all things, creation and all of creation. Mm -hmm. And while we are the priests of creation, uh, he uses these material things to work. Mm -hmm. It's not even so much that he uses them to work. It's like he just they f they find their purpose. Right. 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 right? Like we 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 need he to exists think in it. Right. We need to stop thinking about them as utilitarian as like the purpose right. of this, the purpose of the bones of the saints is to bring healing. No, right. the bones of the saints are filled are with Christ. Right. And Christ heals that, which is right. ill. Right. He is right. the physician of our souls and bodies. Right. That's just what he, that's just what he does. Right. Contact with contact with Christ in a state of repentance brings healing. So, okay. So, so arguably mm -hmm. if he's ever present filling all things, why doesn't this piece of paper heal me? Is why it is it the whole, why is it the whole why is it things that are closest to Christ? Why is it the bones of the saints? Why is it you know that's I guess my question then. Mm -hmm. So I, I love the way that Saint Maximus talks about baptism, and I think there's there's another writer in the in the there's another saint in the Philokalia who who speaks about it in the same way, and they they talk about actualization, which is why I used that word earlier. They talk about how when you are baptized, you receive the full grace of the Holy Spirit, but you have to, part of your work, the ascetic life of the church, right, is actualizing what you have received. And so it's not to say that that paper can't, it's just, is that paper participating in Christ in a way that's actualizing its purpose as being united to Christ? No. Hmm. Hmm. right like that's and that's when we bless when we bless things that's why the that's why we bless things before we hand them out in the church is yeah. to set them up is to reorient their purpose to reestablish their intended purpose right the the palms are fulfilling their purpose as plants but they are fulfilling their purpose as an as a symbol of victory when they're blessed on palm sunday right hmm. yeah Right. Now, and so, be, and we do the same thing with with the water of baptism. Right. Yeah. We right. exercise the 
we exercise the water of baptism to drive out anything contrary to God, anything opposed to God. And then after we exercise it, we bless it to consecrate it and set it for its true and proper purpose. Water is life-giving. And here we're not just talking about life-giving, like I need to drink a hundred ounces of water today because I just started a new nutrition <laughs> regimen. <laughs> talking about water is life-giving because when you rise out of the waters of baptism, you receive new life. So yeah. would it be also arguable then that as the more we get holy, right? The more we concentrate in Christ, the more we find ourselves on the path towards sainthood, though we'll never, you know, but as we do that, no, no, right. Um, <laughs> you ain't wrong. Um, uh, <laughs> that uh, what we do with this piece of paper, right? Like what we do with the, these things are more apt to be sanctified through our because acts you're, of being, because, because I'm being holy. Because you're being more priestly. Right. Because right. you're taking that paper and you're using that paper to do the work of God. Right. And in that yeah. way, that paper is fulfilling its, its purpose as a part of creation united to the ministry and work of God. I got a bunch of paper on my desk with scribbles on it. And then I've got a bunch of paper that are, that have prayers printed on them or names of people that have requested prayers on them. I mean, that, that you've, also sent, is, you've also sent me mail. I've sent you mail with, with certain paper, on, with certain things on it and uh, yeah. may or may not be holy. <laughs> it's true. That is true. Always appreciate your stationery. Thank you. You're so, my, my assistant will be glad to hear that, that her labor in crafting that stationery was, was appreciated by you. <laughs> oh, so it's even more holy than I thought. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, but to your point, to this, so, so that, that our participation mm -hmm. in Christ, mm -hmm. the more we ref focus, let's say. Actualize. Actualize. Let's use a patristic term. Yeah, because okay. there's the potential is there, right? I mean, we all have that potential. Every listener on here has that potential. Every mm -hmm. uh, every person has every, that potential. Everything has that potential. That's the that's the point. Is, all right. of creation. And so it's not weird that physical things communicate God's presence and grace. It's weird, or maybe not weird is the right term, but like, it's fallen when they don't. It's not normal, right? Like part it's not of this normal, is like, right? if we what's think about your definition what... of normal? Right. You know, mm -hmm. is it normal? Is it normal for uh, water to just be this thing that you use to sort of like physically wash your hands? Or is it normal for water to be life-giving in this like total way? Not just nourishing for the body, but nourishing for the soul, mm -hmm. right? Like what is normal at the end of the day? And I think like one of the things is as, as Christians, we have a different def definition of normal. Yeah. You know, but we also like, I don't like that word normal because it normal is normative. And in right. all honesty, the normative experience uh, is that creative, creative existence does not do that. Right. And, but that's not the in, right. That's not its intention, right? The intention I think versus normal is maybe a different way to talk about it. Right. It's purpose or the, the theological term we use is it's telos or it's end, right? What is its, what is its ultimate what is its ultimate intended end? What it's on a trajectory towards something. Mm -hmm. What is that? Um, more so than normal, right? Because mm. it's normal based on my experience for created matter not to fulfill its purpose as, as being totally united to, to Christ and, mm. you know, filled with him. It's intended to do so. And we yeah. as human beings, it might, it's probably not normal for us to be the priests of creation, but we are intended to, to be so, right? So Peter's yeah. shadow bringing healing is not, it's not normal. That's why we call it a sign and a wonder, right? But it's a sign because as we said earlier, right? It points to, it points to Christ's work in the same way that Christ's signs pointed to his divinity. So it's not normal, but he's, he's fulfilling his intended being, which is united to, you know, filled with the Holy spirit, full, full of grace. Yeah. So that even his and, shadow heals, but it's not the fact that his shadow heals because he's like awesome. It's like, he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah. Well, that's another way I think of pushing into it. Like that's 
because that is the the sort of like living up into this purpose like mm-hmm. that's what's supposed to be normal yeah that's what's supposed to happen hmm. interesting mm-hmm. things to ponder how, how, how far short i fall in not doing what's normal too. you think about that too <laughs> oh, <I fall>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. you will get a, le- a letter to that's that why you get letters <laughs> that's right that's right to remind me <laughs> of how, how short how far how far short i'm I gonna fall. i'm gonna be like the i'll be like the servant to xerxes to remind me that i'm human or no remember the athenians remember no it was a dark oh, was it? Uh, oh, xerxes that was every meal after he the had fir- some, after the first war after right? the first war after the first Persian War. Yeah. He had a servant to, whisper in his ear every day, remember the Athenians. So he'd never mm. forget to invade them and actually like avenge. Yeah. 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 yeah Dar- Darius lost the first war. Xerxes yeah. lost the second war. Second one. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I guess we'll never get to the hands because we're just about out of time. Well, we'll only thing I want to say, only thing I want to yeah. say is go arch translation of the end where uh, they are arrested is a bad translation. It should say, and filled with jealousy, they thrust their hands upon the apostles and put them in a common prison. So since we're not talking about hands, I figured I'd give you one more thing to focus on hands that we're not gonna talk about. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, put that in the, we'll, we'll put that in the, in the file with water. Yeah. Yeah, there Things it is. Things we're not gonna talk about. We, we'll though we touch on just about every episode. Yeah. Even this one. Yeah. We'll allude to it multiple times over the course of the next 12 months and then never actually. Great. Well, I'm going to use it on, I'm going to use it in my sermon on Sunday. So. Okay. There you go. Look for that. Yeah. Tune in. All right, Steve, will you uh, conclude us in prayer? Yeah. Yeah. Christ is risen from the dead by death, trampling down death and on those in the tombs bestowing life. Lord, thank you for bringing us together. Lord, uh, bring us together again next week as we continue to uh, walk in the light of your resurrection. Guide us, have mercy upon us. Soften our hearts that we may understand that uh, you are present in the world, you are acting in the world, and help us to see that as what is true and normal rather than the things that we have come to expect as normal. Have mercy on us, O Lord. We ask this of you together with your Father and Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. Truly Truly is risen. Three Men in a Bible, exploring the Sunday scriptures. This has been a listener-supported presentation of Ancient Faith Radio.